Rollback netcode is a sophisticated method used to synchronize online multiplayer games, most importantly, fighting games. It gained prominence with the introduction of GGPO, a system created by Tony Cannon, a gamer frustrated by the lag in the 2006 Xbox 360 release of Street Fighter II Online. GGPO, now open source and available on GitHub, has greatly influenced the development of modern rollback netcode, serving as a fundamental model for many of today's fighting games. Before rollback, what we call delay-based netcode was the standard. This method synchronizes games by waiting for inputs from all players, leading to latency that manifests as pauses or stuttering in character animations. Rollback netcode fixes these laggy visuals by continuously predicting the game's state based on the last known animation and adjusting on-screen actions accordingly. For example, if a character starts to jump, rollback netcode proceeds with this action, then rapidly corrects the animation if new data suggests a different move was made. This approach significantly reduces the perception of lag. While that sounds pretty straightforward, there are some misconceptions and conspiracies out there about rollback netcode. One myth is that certain strategies, like repetitive actions or button mashing as we know it, benefits players in games that have rollback netcode. However, repeating the same actions only makes the game's job easier, because rollback netcode's primary function is to account for different actions due to lag. Continuously mashing the same input gives rollback little to do. Rollback is just filling in the gaps on what would otherwise be a pause in gameplay. Another myth is that rollback is a monolith, with every game using a copy and paste version of the same code. This isn't the case. Rollback is a concept, not a tool. It's like a basic recipe for chocolate cake. While Capcom that makes Street Fighter or Bandai Namco that makes Tekken might use the fundamental same recipe, their respective versions of rollback can be quite different. Now let's visualize delay-based versus rollback netcode. Imagine a person walking in a straight line. With delay-based netcode, they momentarily freeze mid-step during network lag, and then resume once the lag is resolved, resulting in a clunky and frustrating experience. In the case of rollback, if the walker keeps moving forward and a lag spike occurs, the rollback netcode continues playing the walking animation, waiting for any different input. If the input animation matches what rollback is predicting, the end user won't even notice there was a lag spike. But what if the walker suddenly changes direction during a lag spike? Rollback netcode, initially predicting continued forward movement, quickly adjusts when it receives a new direction input. The walker is then shown making a rapid but smooth transition to their new path, so it's most definitely less jarring than freezing, and to the naked eye, most users won't even know what's happening. This is where rollback shines. Consider Ryu executing his famous Shoryuken Dragon Punch in a game. As he winds up and goes airborne, lag occurs. With delay-based netcode, you'll see Ryu pause for the duration needed to resynchronize both players, then resume. With rollback when lag occurs, it proceeds with the Shoryuken animation, assuming no input changes, and if there are none, the players might not even realize there was a lag spike. Wow. The open sourcing of GGPO around 2019 was a milestone in the gaming community, allowing wider access to this advanced netcode technology. It laid the groundwork for modern fighting game netcode. Many current fighting games use rollback netcode. As internet infrastructure improves, network programming advances, and gamers' demand for reduced lag continues, we can expect ongoing improvements to online fighting game netcode. If you're interested in learning more about different open source technologies, here's a video about how Linux works. Peace.